Hello, I'm Dave from Dino PC, and today we're talking about the brand new NVIDIA GPUs. Can you believe it? The NVIDIA 1080 has been announced on Friday. We were all away for the announcement, unfortunately. However, we're going to bring you up to speed on everything that we know far so far from the live stream. NVIDIA like to spring very nice surprises on us. And rather than comparing their brand new epic GPU to the stuff of last year, last year, last year, like the 750, 780s, etc things like that they've decided to go completely all out and compare it directly to the titan x which is exactly what i am doing as well i've created a graph so that everybody can understand exactly what is what in terms of the new 1080. So here is my beautiful graph, as you can see right here. In terms of CUDA cores, we have got 2,560 in the 1080 compared to the 2,048 that were in the 980, but slightly less than the Titan X, uh, which had 3,072 CUDA cores. In terms of RAM, we've got eight gigabytes of GDDR5X, eight gigabytes of frame buffer. This is fabulous which is obviously fantastic news for everybody at home who wants to play in 4K, which is what the 1080 is obviously designed towards, which is crazy, 1080 for 4K, right? In the 980, we had four gigabytes of pitiful DDR5 RAM, and the Titan X had 12 gigabytes of GDDR5 as well. The clock speed is something truly magnificent. 1,607 is going to be the base clock for this card and 1126 was the 980 and the Titan X was a, just a mere 1000. Can you believe it? The boost clock is what I'm really interested in though because the boost clock tends to be what your games are going to be uh, running on all the time anyway. It's only going to be at that uh, the base clock uh, when you're when it's idle and not doing anything. So the boost clock comes up to 1733 megahertz, which I reckon with some tweaking we might be able to get near 2000, which would be insane. The boost clock for the 980 is 1216, and the boost clock for the Titan X, a mere 1075. TDP or thermal design power is 180 for the uh, 1080. That seems kind of appropriate in a way. The 980, meanwhile, had 165 watts, and the Titan X had a monstrous 250 watts. In terms of transistors, we have 7.2 billion in the 1080, which is a full 2 billion more than we had in the 980, but slightly less, um, at 800,000 less in the Titan X, which had 8 billion transistors. In terms of price, we're looking at 599 for the 1080. 549 for the 980, that's at launch. And for the Titan X, we're still looking at launch and probably now as well, $999. That's all okay, but what does all of this mean for you, the consumer? Well, overall, it's very good news. CUDA cores is something that affects physics in games, things like dust, water, and fire. So for all of those people modding out there, you can get those awesome resolution textures and you can retexture things at 8K and all that kind of stuff. And hopefully, in theory, it means that the graphics card's gonna be able to keep up and not start chugging when you hit those really, really smoky, dense scenes in your games. The RAM is also quite interesting as well. GDDR5X has twice the bandwidth of regular D GDDR5. So eight gigabytes of frame buffer, why not, while it's not as much as the Titan X, has twice the amount of memory bandwidth. I liken it to a pipe with water flowing through it. If you extend the pipe size, more water is gonna flow through it and you're gonna get more at the other end. It's kind of the same here. So what about the clock speed? Getting up to that insane amount of clock speed can only be down to the 60 nanometer process that they use for making these brand new cards. Moving over to the transistors, obviously more transistors means more raw horsepower, which is obviously very, very good. This is also a direct result of, of the 60 nanometer process used in making these cards. Nvidia also announced a bunch of new technologies that's gonna be going into their GPUs. We'll be covering this next week in a video with Marco because he is the best person to explain exactly what's changed and exactly what NVIDIA are doing similar to AMD and what benefits that you guys are going to get for it. 
So that is the rundown of the brand new 1080. I didn't speak about the 1070 much because they haven't actually released as many things about it yet. There are a few things that we don't know about it. But as soon as we get one, as soon as we uh, work out what's what about it, you can bet your bubble that we are going to be talking about it here as well. We'll also try our hardest to get hold of them early so we can get some tests done. And as soon as an embargo lifts, then we'll definitely, definitely have some overclocking stuff in our test bench. And I've also got to test some more graphics cards in the test bench so we can get a good comparison with last gen. We also want to overclock it to the extreme when we get it as well. See exactly what we can push out before the card explodes, which I'm sure you're looking forward to. Leave us a like if you're looking forward to that in the future. And let us know in the comment section below, what do you think about the 1080? Are you going to be getting one? We'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye. Okay, third time is the charm. I recorded this video. Oh, God, Jesus, wires. I recorded this video three times trying to get this right and only discovered there is a tiny bit of micro fluff from my jeans that went into my phone for the lanyard mic. So hopefully this time it works, but we should find out very soon. Uh, so I guess this will go in the loop reel. Guys, this week, they, you need to subscribe to Dino PC. We've got some awesome stuff coming this week. We've got Sai. We've got Sai talking about keyboards and the differences between the different switches and which one you should buy. We've got some epic, epic uh, voice recognition stuff that's coming from MSI. We've got we've got the brand new Dino PC challenge with Trollsus coming out tomorrow. You guys should subscribe to the channel. It's awesome. Right, I'm out of here.